All right, good morning. Precalculus, all the survivors from first semester. Uh, anyhow, it's really good to see you. Um, I will have to admit to you, I am kind of sick to my stomach right now because um, the district promised me that they would um, generate your Google Classroom and they have not done that. Um, and so they're still in the process of trying to figure it out. And of course, you know me, I'm on edge and, you know, going back and forth with emails like, what are you guys doing? You know, get the classrooms ready. Um, so uh, anyhow, um, you don't need to worry about that. Um, but I'm just letting you know that I don't know when you'll have it at this point. Um, and um, what we normally do is we join these class meetings from Google Classroom. So not having Google Classroom, uh, I'm going to have to find, you know, a way for us to join. So anyhow, don't don't worry about anything. Um, I'm hoping that Google Classroom will be um, there um, the next time we meet, which would be on Thursday. And um, if it's not, I will notify you via email. OK. All right, so um, if you guys make sure you have a pencil and a paper because I'm going to be throwing a lot of stuff at you um, as far as like housekeeping things. All right, so first of all, um, I need you guys to get the Remind app. Um, so most of you do have the Remind app, but those of you who do not have the Remind app, um, it's a great way for us to text message back and forth and it's, it's, it's really quick. It's faster than email. And so I need you to get that. So I'm going to write it up here real quick if you can jot it down. So this is the Remind app, the code for period one. So I kind of have this down today. Can you guys see this? Um, this is for period Remind. For period one. If you already have it, this is not new. Okay, if you have it, you're good to go. Um, so for period one, um, I forgot. You're going to, what is it? Is it text? Eight one zero one six. Let me let me check because I, I didn't write that down. Hold on. I thought I had everything in front of me, but apparently I don't. Eight one zero one zero. So you're going to text that, and then you're going to put in for period one um, at e k. Four three eight E2. So that is the Remind app. Can you all see that? Yeah, okay. Okay. So next, I just want to, I, I want you to know that um, in the past we've had um, three class schedules, class meetings. So we had the regular class meetings. We had the meetings on Wednesday, and now we have a new schedule, and that's the schedule that we're following this week. Um, so when when I when you guys have Google Classroom, I will put all three schedules in there. But do you guys have any questions for this week? Um, you guys should just know that you're going to meet with me. You're here today at nine twenty five, and, and the next time you're going to meet with me is on Thursday at nine twenty five. Does anybody have any questions about that schedule? Now next week. Monday is a holiday, so we'll be following the same schedule. So the same schedule that we're following this week, we're going to follow next week. Okay, and I think it occurs four times. Um, and then after that, you know, we just follow the regular class meeting schedule for Monday and Wednesday. Okay, anybody have is anybody confused about this schedule or what's going on as far as the, the holiday weeks? Okay, good. All right. Um, so once classroom is set up by the district, I, I have a lot of things I'm gonna post that you already know about. So I'm gonna put things in there like the factory methods. 
um, that had to solve the quadratic solving methods and things that were materials that were in your old Google Classroom. I'm gonna, so I don't want you guys to to get paranoid. Like, oh my gosh, she just she just gave 18 posts. Somebody's not muted. Um, Raylene, can you? Or is it? It's not Raylene. Really. You're using somebody's laptop, right? Because I don't have a Rayleigh. Um, can you mute yourself? Yeah, thanks. Um, anyhow, what was I talking about? Okay, I have a bunch of things I'm gonna post in Google Classroom, but I can't post them because I don't have Google Classroom. It hasn't been created yet. So don't worry about it. So basically, um, you're just going to, on Thursday, you're going to try to go to Google Classroom. Um, I'll try to send you the code for it if I get it. And you'll join from them from there. If something is different and still screwed up, then I will let you know. OK, um, like I did with this email that I sent you. So thank you so much for reading the email and joining class today. OK, anybody have any questions right now? All right, well, remember uh, what our deal was. I had a proposition for you last semester that said that if you show your face, I will give you the problems for the final. And so um, just a reminder that you promised and you put in writing, you committed um, that you were gonna show your face. And so um, I'm really looking forward to that. And I think that um, we're gonna see a lot of positives come from that. So I really appreciate um, you doing that. Okay, so the first thing I wanna do is, um, I wanna go over the syllabus because I think the syllabus is gonna make more sense to you than what it did the first time I gave it to you. So I don't know if I'm gonna spend the whole time going over this and I apologize for being boring. Um, if I knew how to dance, you know, I would do a dance for you or something exciting, but um, yeah, you don't wanna see that and you don't wanna hear me sing. So let me share my screen with you and um, we'll look at the syllabus. Um, feel free. Um, to ask me any questions, um, if you have any. Can you guys mute yourself, please? Whoever's not muted, um, can you mute yourself? Thank you. Okay, hold on just a second. Okay, I'm gonna go to classroom, hopefully. Thank you for your patience. All right. I'm actually going into one of my Algebra 2 classes, um, but don't worry about it. It's the same type of syllabus. So what you see here is a bunch of things that I'm going to be um, actually posting in your classroom. So let's just look at this real quick. Um, how to submit a photo, how to access, um, well, actually, you're not going to have that one. Um, this is the help desk and the CHS help desk. And then um, I'll be posting the meeting schedules. So the class meetings, meetings on holiday weeks, the class meetings on Wednesdays, and the class meetings. So the reason why this is gray is because um, I haven't posted these in Algebra 2 yet, and your Google Classroom doesn't exist. So, of course, I haven't done it in, in your classroom. Um, but what I do want to look at is um, your syllabus. Actually, let me go to an old period. Uh, no, because I changed some things. So let me just... I'll look, I'll edit this. Okay, so disregard the Algebra 2 stuff. Um, in Google Classroom, you'll see the pre-calculus um, syllabus, and it will talk about the office hours and everything else. So this stuff is, I'm, I'm more concerned about this type of stuff. All right, so anyhow, um, so the weekly meeting expectations, um, I, I, you know, I was talking to my great nephew the other day and he's like, my, my great niece was, she said, yeah, Zachary rolls out of bed one minute before class starts at, at Redlands at Rev. And um, I'm like, that's not the way to do it. Um, so I'm gonna encourage you again, 
to try to act like you're in school, um, try to get in a routine. So whatever you normally do, if you were actually going to school, um, whether it be take a shower, eat breakfast, try to get in a routine, please. It will help you so much um, if you get in a routine and be ready to go. Make sure your device is um, charged. Make sure that your calculator is available, that you're there with all your materials and be ready. Um, so that was the first one here. Be early to ensure your technology is charged. Um, make sure that just your, your headphones and your earbuds and everything else is ready to go. Sit close so that your face fills the screen. Um, float across the bottom of the screen to mute yourself. You guys are really good about that. And don't forget to unmute yourself um, when asked a question and you wanna talk, um, like now. Um, so feel free, um, I want this to be more lax today. Um, feel free to ask me any questions, and interrupt me anytime that you want or you're confused about something. Um, so feel free to just chime in anytime. Um, participate by asking questions, be engaged. Um, so now me being able to see your face, please nod. Um, you already did that this morning already. Um, or give a thumbs up. That really helps me a lot to know that you can hear me, that you understand me. Um, so um, I'm excited that <laughs> that's going to help me. Um, like I said, be prepared um, with your materials, your notebook, your assignments. Take notes when the lesson begins. Don't wait for me to say to take notes. Um, just take notes automatically. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit about that. Um, but you, what you want to do is put today's date. So you should put um, Tuesday 112 um, so that if anybody asks you for notes, um, you know which ones they're talking about. Um, make sure you dress appropriately. Um, refrain from eating and eating. If you can, please um, do that beforehand. Make sure your work area is clean and silence your phone. Try not to be um, accepting personal or sending personal text messages, only messages that pertain to the meeting. All right, so thank you so much. And you guys have been great about that. Um, the textbook, you need notebook, paper, pencil. Make sure you have these items. Uh, make sure you have a three ring binder. I'm gonna go over the, the notebook again uh, because I'm telling you right now, if you guys learn a little bit of math, awesome. But I'm trying to prepare you. I'm trying to prepare you for life. I'm trying to prepare you for college and I'm trying to prepare you for the workforce. So the things that I'm training you for will help you in real life. So please, please, please listen to me. Um, don't look at me as your, just as your math teacher. Look at me as a life coach and try to um, listen and adapt the things that I'm trying to show you to help you in your life and things that you're doing in your life. Um, do not throw away any papers. You're going to need them throughout the year and in the future. Um, a lot of students use my materials in their college courses, whether it be at Valley, Cal State, Stanford. Um, so keep those materials around and keep them handy. Okay. Um, once again, we're going to be using Remind Classroom. Um, you're not using my HRW. You're using my math lab. Um, so you're using my math lab. And um, if anybody needs that account, um, you should already have it, uh, but make sure and contact me um, if you need my math lab. So this is Algebra 2. You're not using this when you're using my math lab. And the video web conferencing that we're using is WebEx. Um, when we work in groups, we will be working in Google Meets. All right, so here are your expectations. Um, you're going to complete all the assignments by the required due date. Um, you're going to legitimately complete them. Um, you're going to send me the assignment percentage, but just remember that you're trying to hold yourself accountable to do the assignments so that you can get good exam grades, which are 60%. Um, so regular, co regularly communicate with me and other students, engage, um, check the class classroom for um, messages and announcements, be professional and respectful, be honest and responsible, and be committed to your own success in this course. Um, so my, my the, the things that you should expect from me is that I provide complete and well-organized materials, that I encourage questions and other communications, that I maintain um, time for you to work with me and office hours. 
um, that I keep Zangle updated and that I stay professional and respectful with you. Okay, this is not the textbook you're using. You're using the Blitzer book. Um, here are the assignments. Let's go over this. Assignments will contain both online and textbook material. Assignments must be completed in a specific format. So let me go over this real quick. Can you guys see this? Can you guys, can you guys see this okay? So here's your piece of paper. If you have not been doing this, please do this. Because if we go back to school at all, you're going to be required to do these assignments like this. So what you do is you close your piece of paper and you put your name, date, period, which would be period one, and the assignment, like assignment um, or lesson two one there. And when you start the assignment, you're going to work on the inside and work vertically up and down. This would be one page, this would be two pages. Now, the reason why this is important is because this is how I want your exam scratch paper done. So whenever you take an exam, you must turn in scratch paper and it must be done in this format. So basically you're doing the assignments to practice for the exam scratch paper. Assignment percentages are due on specific days. I do not accept late work. Um, if students fail to turn in the assignment percentage by the due date, they will not receive credit. Um, since there are only virtual three virtual classes per week, expect assignments to be more comprehensive and interactive. Um, completing assignments, grading papers, making corrections, and giving legitimate grade percentages is essential and the responsibility of the students. These things are necessary to perform at a high level. As a result, a student will receive a high grade in the course. All right, I want to talk. I'm going to stop sharing for a moment and I actually want to show you the notebook. So here's the notebook. This is my cat's notebook storm. Um, so he likes to have pictures of his friends and he has it all decorated. Um, but um, I have this title page for you um, in classroom if I can ever get it. And so um, you have to have I want you to have a three ring binder. And this is going to help you for college, like I said. Um, this title page you can put here or you can put in here. Um, in classroom, I provided a, an assignment sheet, which I recommend that whenever you come to class, you should have this notebook. So this is what you need. You need your textbook and you need this notebook. And so you can list the assignments here and you can keep track of your grade over here. I don't really care about this column at all. Um, and then this next page is just a blank sheet that has your notes in it. And your notes are going to be in, in chronological order. Now, these are the notes that you take in your class meetings with me. And like I said, the notes, um, you should put the date on the top and take notes. And you, can, you don't need to get a new sheet of paper you know, on Thursday. Um, you can just draw a line and write the, the date on Thursday, which would be what, the 14th. And you could have one big trail of notes. The next section is, that's me, by the way. Just kidding. I thought it was Cinderella, but my great niece informed me this is not Cinderella. This is somebody else um, in the Disney clan. Um, I don't know who it is, but I told her it was me, and uh, she didn't appreciate that too much. Um, anyhow, the um, assignments you're going to put, you're going to keep in here. Now, listen to this. You probably know why you need the assignments in here now. Because remember when I gave you the problems for the final? If you have your assignments in here and you have the assignments in order, you can look things up easily and study for the final. So there's a reason why I want the assignments in here. So you can look back and say, oh, I messed up on that. This is what I need to do. Or I remember doing that. This is how, this is what she did. This is what I did in my assignment. And then this last section is for handouts. And I have a multiplication table in here. And if I were you, you know, I would print out the syllabus so you have it at your disposal. And other things that I've given you, maybe the factory methods or anything else that I give you that you use a lot, put them in the handout section. Okay, so please, please, please keep this notebook. Um, I am not able to check it, but if we were at school, I would check it. And guess what? It would count as a test grade. 
So that's how important this is to me. And this is how important I think it would be to you that I consider this notebook check an exam grade. All right, so please have a three ring binder. Um, I don't want a loose leaf. I, I want a binder with three rings. Um, normally, I provide them for students who can't get them. Um, that's kind of hard to do right now with this distance learning. Um, but I guess I could I could email one to you. So if you can't get a three ring binder, let me know and I'll email one. I mean, I will I will send one through the U.S. Postal Service um, to you. All right, let me go back to sharing my screen here. Anybody have any questions so far? All right, so basically this is just saying that um, you have to have a three ring binder. Um, I would have a separate notebook for math, but you can use a five subject notebook if you want. Um, the math notebook must be formatted with the title page assignment sheet like I showed you in section dividers. The section dividers um, must separate the notebook and be labeled notes, assignments, and handouts. Um, students are expected to bring your notebook to every class meeting. All right, as far as exams go, um, because we're in distance learning, I have been giving online exams. Um, it is imperative that you attend class, complete assignments, prepare for and perform well on exams because they're 60% of your grade. So um, sometimes I'll see students that have 100% on assignment one, 100% on assignment two, 100% on assignment three, and then they fail the exam. So I just want you to know that that doesn't compute. Um, so make sure you're holding yourself accountable. Make sure you're legitimately doing the assignments. And I promise you that if you are doing that, you will get good exam grades. I promise, because doing the assignments and getting good exam grades, there, there's a correlation there, okay? All right, so I hope you're not asleep. Thank you for bearing with me. The final, I'll talk about it as soon as I get it. Um, here's the grading policy. Assignments are 20%. Notice the bulk of the grade is the 60% for exams. Um, so um, together, these make up 100%. So you can think of these as points, 20 points, 60 points, 20 points. Um, as you know, uh, this is how I grade. Um, I do not grade on a curve because this class is pretty important. And so um, these, these are the letter grades. Okay, students are required to attend class meetings three times a week via WebEx. Recorded lessons can be reviewed on my YouTube channel. Um, for any student who could not attend the scheduled class meeting, to, meeting, um, excuse me, scheduled class meeting due to an extenuating circumstance or illness. Now, um, I'm talking about COVID or a death in the family or something extreme like that. I'm not talking about lame excuses. All right, so you might have to explain this to your parent or guardian. Um, sometimes parents are, we're going to go to Costco and they want you to go. They want you to get the laundry out of the dryer. Um, those are not, those are not legitimate excuses. Um, and, and I do know that the parents are a lot at fault with this. Um, you're going to have to explain with them to them that when you are in class, you need solitude. So everyone needs to back off, um, when you're in class, um, so just like they wouldn't walk into my classroom at Colton High School, it's very important that they're not interrupting you during class. If you need me to explain this to them, I would be happy to do that. Just let me know. So hopefully you can explain that to them. Um, if you need me to help you, I will explain to them um, what I expect during your class meetings. If there is an extenuating circumstance um, where you miss a meeting, um, you need to let me know what's going on as far as attendance goes. Um, so uh, you can't just be absent for no, no reason. So make sure you talk to me and let me know what's going on. You guys are, most of you are real good about that. So um, keep up the work, those of you who are doing it. Okay, now here's what you wanna pay attention to. Um, workshops are tutoring and um, you just need to let me know 
Um, if you ever want to have a workshop or if you ever want to meet with me, um, you, we can definitely meet any, pretty much any time you want. Um, so you can send me a remind message. Um, you can tell me during WebEx. So we could have a WebEx meeting. We could have a Google Meet. Um, you can email me um, or you can call my home number. Now, if you call my home number, make sure you leave a message with your number. So say, hey, this is Bozo the Clown. Uh, my number is 888-8888. You know, um, please call me um, at your earliest convenience. Now, I do have a request from you. I had students contacting me last semester at 10 o'clock at night, 12 a.m., 3 in the morning. Please, please, please pretend like we're in school and try not to, unless it's an emergency or something, you know, I mean, I don't mind if you contact me, don't get me wrong, but please don't, don't email me or text me or try to correspond with me, you know, after the class day. So around, you know, four or five, back off. Um, try to not contact me in my personal time because I am tempted to look and see what your issue is. Um, so please just try to, to keep it within the school hours. Um, but like I said, if there's some type of emergency or something you, you need, I don't want you to be stressed out. You can contact me anytime you want. Um, but try to, try to keep your contacts, just general contacts, um, within reason, reasonable times. All right, you guys, attendance um, is really super important. A student will be marked present if there's evidence of daily participation. Um, for example, you'll be marked present if you submit required assignments on time. Otherwise, um, you'll be marked absent. Um, so, for example, a parent contacted me and said, um, Helen was in class and you marked her absent. And I checked and said, well, Helen was in class for five minutes and the class is 80 minutes. Do you want me to mark her present? So remember that you're required to come to class from beginning to end. So being in class for five minutes, 10 minutes, even 15 minutes does, ju does not justify being present. And I'll mark you present if you want me to, but come on. Um, I can't guarantee you're going to do well with that type of game playing. So um, the other thing too is um, hopefully you're not going to do what some did last semester, turn on your device and then leave and pretend that you're in class. Um, I am aware of that, um, but it's, you know, you're not playing games with me. I mean, you might be only playing games with your own educational welfare. So just be careful, life is full of choices. So student participation attendance is essential for success. This course is designed to be interactive and student-centered. There's numerous assignments and assessments planned. Absences will jeopardize your success. A student who fails to submit an assignment by the due date will not receive credit and not be marked present in class. A student who does not participate in the manner above will be subject to appropriate intervention by counseling and, and administration. For unanticipated emergency absences, a student must contact the teacher by email or phone. And if you're unable to contact me, uh, you need to contact Colton High School. Academic honesty is important, cheating and plagiarism. Um, or just basically you're not doing your own work um, and you can read through this, but you do want to do your own work. Um, here's services for learners with disabilities. Um, now, I did fix this in my syllabus. So these links do work now. So I do want to go over this. If you're having technical difficulties, use another dev device if you have one. Immediately notify me um, or site administration. Okay, there's two places to get help. Um, the Colton Joint Unified School District, this link does work now. Um, you can also call, this is new, the help desk at the district. Now, I'll be honest with you, I tried to call this number and they hung up on me four times. 
But supposedly you could call this number from seven to four Monday through Friday. Um, we also have a CHS student help center and I did check this link and it does work. So in your syllabus, once it's, once it's in Google Classroom, you can actually go into the syllabus and um, click on these links and hopefully they work now. This verification letter, um, you do not have to fill it out. Um, we did that first semester. All right, does anybody have any questions about the syllabus? Okay, well, just let me know if you do. Um, I wanna go back in here and look at something else. So what I wanna, Okay, I'm gonna show you the title page. So in your Google Classroom, um, this is the new title page. Uh, this is what it looks like. It has a fractal, which is, this is mathematical. This was generated by equations, by the way. So this beautiful picture um, is a Mandelbrot fractal. And um, you, could put, you could print this out if you want and use this as your title page. You can make up your own, I don't care. The assignment sheet is like I showed you in my notebook or Storm's notebook. You could print this out and put it in your notebook. And then I wanna look at this assignment in notebooks. All this will be in classroom. So let me click on this and show you. All right, so I'm gonna go over the assignments again to make sure you understand. So assignments are given pretty much daily. It's important that you do all the assignments. Um, failure to do so will affect your grade on exams. Late assignments will not be accepted unless it's some type of extenuating circumstance that you and I have talked about. Uh, make sure you do your assignments in pencil. Um, I do not accept assignments in pen. So you could print this out if you want once it's in Google Classroom, but um, if you just wanna jot this down in your notes for today, um, assignments done in pen, this is the blank, will not be accepted. Assignments must be folded in half like I showed you. And at the top right-hand corner, you should have, like I showed you here, name, date, period, and assignment number or assignment. The original problem must be written down for every problem on every assignment. All work showing how the problem was done must be written down. Problems are to be worked vertically and all answers must be clearly circled. So for those of you who are wondering why am I not filling in the blanks because we did this first semester and if any of you need me to fill in the blanks or, or should tell you these answers, I'll be happy to do that. Um, ultimately, I want you to do corrections at the line drawn at the end of the assignment so that you know what problems you missed, so you know which problems to study for the exam, so you know which problems to look at for the final. You're gonna indi indicate corrections by writing the word corrections underneath the line. I don't give a lot of extra credit, um, and I never give extra credit in lieu of an assignment. If you miss school, um, if you miss work because, I'm sorry, schoolwork because of an excused absence, you have the opportunity to complete them in um, a reasonable time. Um, you can receive full credit if your absence was um, verified. Um, all of this absence stuff, um, you can talk to me about it, but um, the main thing is don't be absent um, and make sure you're always turning in your assignments on time. Um, we already went over the notebook, but I'm going to go over this briefly. You're going to keep a math notebook. Um, and notice what I said, it counts as an exam, but uh, since we're in distance learning, this is not true right now. Your notebook must be a three ring binder type. 
you have to have a title page assignment sheet and the dividers are notes, assignments and handouts. So this is just going over the notebook and the contents of the notebook. So you can you can look at this. Um, it'll be in Google Classroom and and or you can print this out and fill in the blanks if you want to keep this in your notebook. All right, let's see if I can pin myself for a second here. All right, do you guys want to ask me any questions about anything right now? Everything's as clear as mud, hopefully. Okay, well, obviously you can ask me questions, but this syllabus um, which will be your pre-calculus syllabus will be in Google Classroom. Um, if you want to print it out or refer to it anytime for all that information. I did spend a lot of time writing it, so it'd be useful to you. This is not, this wasn't made for it to be a burden. This was to be useful information to you. So um, I hope you see it that way. All right, let's talk about some math. How about that? I hope you guys had a great uh, Christmas break. Um, I don't know about you, but I do know a lot of people with COVID. Um, I've known a lot of people in the hospital. I've known some people who have passed away from it. And I really hope that you guys are safe and well. And I missed you so much. And I'm just letting you know that if you or your family or any relatives or friends have been sick with COVID or have passed because of COVID, I'm here for you. Um, you can talk to me anytime you want. Um, I may not have any answers, but I have a shoulder, you know, to lean on and I'm here for you. Um, I don't know about you, but I've been really sad lately. Um, I think I'm on the verge of depression even because I'm just so sad and scared about this COVID thing. And so um, if any of you are scared, um, I, I can offer some um, places for you to go um, for like meditation for stress or um, help. So just let me know. Um, I want you to know, I'm telling you this because I don't want you to feel like you're alone out there. Um, I, I know how you feel um, because I'm there with you. Okay. Um, but if you need anything from me, um, I'm not just your math teacher. Like I said, I'm, I wear a lot of different hats. Um, so I'm here for you if you need me. All right, so you have your notes. And you have today's date is 1-12. Oh, happy new year, guys. Happy new year. I know we're not off to a good start, but I really hope this year is going to be better um, than the than 2020. Um, so when I write my notes, I usually put the date and I put the day. So that I have both. Well, guess what? Last semester, we did the prerequisite section and we finished chapter one. So we're just slightly behind, but I'm not worried about that. You shouldn't be worried about that. Um, I do believe that us spending time on those foundational skills are gonna help you in the future. So I'm hoping that I got us on track and that now you feel more equipped and more empowered to do math. All right. So um, even though we're not where we need to be, I don't care. I'm not worried about it. All I care about is teaching you and you learning. And um, 
whatever you learn from me, you're going to be take, be able to take with you. All right. So we're going to look, we're going to start with chapter two, one, and we're going to look at complex numbers, which are imaginary numbers. And um, let me grab some Windex. Hold on. Sorry about that. Thought I had it on the table, but I just have my water. All right, so we're looking at complex numbers. And I'm actually going to be giving you five objectives. So I'm not going to write them up here, but you can look at them in your uh, Blitzer book. Um, so chapter 2-1 or uh, lesson 2-1 starts on page 308. So page 308, and you'll see the five objectives listed there in the, in the top left-hand box. So I'll just rattle off what I'm going to do, okay? I'm going to, we're going to add and subtract complex numbers, which you're going to, you're going to find to be so easy. We're going to multiply complex numbers, which you're going to find to be so easy. We're going to divide complex numbers. We're going to perform operations with square roots of negative numbers. And we're going to solve quadratic equations with complex imaginary solutions. All right. So. The first thing I want to talk about, can you guys see the board okay? All right, am I cutting out at all? I'm good? Okay. So the imaginary unit is I. Ms. Birch, I'm going to log back in just because it's breaking up for me. I'm going to log back in, okay? Okay, yeah, no problem. So in algebra, the teacher said, or they told me, we don't use I because it looks like a one. Well, that's a lie. We don't use I because I is a number. And I is the number square root of negative one. And we're going to put that in a box because that's a fact. You know, let me turn off this light. Do you have, can you guys see a glare? Is that better? Yeah, that's better. Okay, thank you. And then, so that's a fact. And then we also know that I squared is equal to negative one. So I is equal to the square root of a negative under a radical and I squared is equal to negative one. All right, so for example, if we have the square root of negative 25, we said that there were no real solutions, right? So you can't have a negative under a square root, right? Well, now we're gonna get an imaginary answer. So what this really means, and we're not gonna do it this way, so I'm gonna show you what we're gonna do. What this really means is this though. It means negative one times 25. And what that really means is the square root of negative one times the square root of 25. And what that really means, can you guys see, still see the board? I heard a 25 is five, so our answer is five I. Now we're not gonna do all this work. So we're gonna skip a bunch of steps, but I wanted to show you what it meant. All right, so here's what we're gonna do. Instead of, instead of doing all those steps, we're gonna say, ah, there's a negative one under the radical. So a negative one under the radical means I, and who gets to come out? Nobody, remember with square root, you have to have two for one to come out. Nobody gets to come out. So the answer is square root of six I, that I is not under the radical. So let's say we have the square root of negative 16i. 
No, negative 16, sorry. Go ahead, tell me the answer. What's square root of negative one? What's square root of 16? Four. So same thing with this. Well, you have to simplify radicals. So we have to do a prime factorization and an I comes out because we have a square root of negative one. So a prime factorization of eight is I'm listening. Who gets to come out? One of the two. It's stuck. A two? Can you guys give me a thumbs up if you get this? You understand what's going on with this? And are you okay? Yep. So that's it. Pretty easy, right? So when you see a negative, under a radical, a, neg a square root of negative one is I, so just pull an I out. And then simplify the radical the way we normally do. I haven't talked about this yet. Okay, do you guys want me to do any more examples? Are you guys cool? Can you do one more? Yeah. I just want you guys to know I'm, I'm so happy to be with you. You don't even know. I'm not good when I'm not with you. When I'm with my, when I'm with the district and my colleagues and yeah, it's, it's crazy town to me. My sanctuary is with you guys. I mean, it's, everything else is crazy to me. So thank you. Thank you for coming to class and thank you for being there for me. All right, let's do some more problems. Now, that negative under square root means that that's a square root of negative one times square root of 32. But we're not going to write that. We know that. So what I want you to see in your mind is you're seeing this in your mind. But we're not going to write it down. What we're going to write down is we're going to do a prime factorization of 32, and we know that square root of negative one is I. Now, you might be wondering, what are we going to, this is a, we live in a real life. When are we going to use imaginary numbers? Well, guess what? If you're going to be in electricity, you use electric circuits, you have current and resistors and capacitors, you're going to have to know about imaginary numbers. So you're going to have to know about imaginary numbers uh, in some, you know, fields. So. All right, so on 30, when you do 32, a prime factorization, you're going to take out a prime, right? So what's a prime? A number that can only be multiplied by one in itself. So I'm going to take out a two. I'm going to take out another prime. Or, look, I notice that that's a perfect square. So can I do this and cheat? Isn't 16 times 2, 32? So I don't have to do a complete prime factorization. I don't have to do all that. I can cheat. So who gets to come out? One of the fours. And who gets stuck? The two. And that would be our answer, right? Yeah?
guys good? Yeah. Bernie, Brandon, Alex, Adrian, you guys okay? Yeah. So, square root of negative one is I, so we're going to take that outside the radical. We're going to do a prime factorization on 56. Or two times what is 16. Take out another prime. So I can take out a two, or I'm going to take out a seven. Seven times what is 28. There's another perfect square, but I'll just break it down. So this would be is 56. Go ahead, I'm gonna come out. Two. Who gets stuck? 14. Who gets stuck? Who 14. Gets stuck? Yes. Yes. Yeah. yeah. All right. You ready to go on? Let me just tell you uh, today, this is pretty easy stuff. Don't make it harder than what it is. Don't, don't let your mind say, well, this has got to be harder. I don't think I can do it. It's going to get harder. There's going to be hard. Uh-uh. You are what you say. So you need to keep telling yourself, yes, I can. Yes, I will. Yes, this is easy. Yes, I understand it. Yes, I get it. Yes, yes, yes. Not no, no, no. All right, so what is this complex number thing? This is what it looks like. This is a complex number in standard form. This A, this, oh, let me show you what the numbers look like. So they can look like this, this 5i. That's a complex number in standard form. Um, I'm gonna one plus i. So here's the deal. This number in front is called the real part. Let me get another pen. This B is called the imaginary part. And that I is called the imaginary unit. Okay, so if I asked you, all right, you guys, here's a complex number. What's the real part? So please participate. What's the real part? Hey. Right. What is it? Two, right? Yeah. yeah. What's the imaginary part? Five. Negative five. five. Negative five. Uh huh. And what's the imaginary unit? I. I right, everybody's participating. I don't care if you all talk at once. Unmute yourself. Okay, ready? On this one, what's the real part? Seven. Seven. What's the imaginary part? I. Would, would it be like I or something? Or is there like a an invisible number in front of the I? It's a one. Right? One. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
is mm -hmm. is what? The imaginary unit. All right. All right. All right. Let's do it again. Everybody participate. This is a complex number, right? What's the real part? Four. Four. What's the imaginary part? Thirteen. Negative thirteen. Negative thirteen. Thirteen. Okay. The form has a plus in it. So the imaginary part is a negative 13, okay? Mm. Because the form has a plus in it. What's the imaginary unit? Uh, the I. I. Uh-huh. Okay, last one. Well, so I'm going to do a different one, but all right, here we go. All right, what's the real part? 17. What's the imaginary part? Two. 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 And what's the imaginary unit? I. Yep. Okay. Now I'm going to try to trick you. So I'm going to show you how smart you are. Here we go. Watch. What's the real part? Zero. Yes. And guess what? This is called pure imaginary. Mm, okay. So when there's no real part, it's pure imaginary. Okay, what about this guy? What's the real part? Two. What's the imaginary part? Zero. So that wouldn't be real? pure real? Pure real, or we just cut. You're right. It's pure real. Uh, we call it a real number. So when there's no real part, it's pure imaginary, and when there's no imaginary part, it's pure real. Right. Real number. Yeah. These guys over here are just called complex numbers. So these are complex. This is a pure imaginary, and that's a pure real, just real number. All right. I've done this before, but you haven't. So remember back in semester one, where we added like terms, we're going to use the same concept to com add complex numbers. Besides. This is going to be an easy one. But remember. And I think most of you realized, but when you when you do the when you go to my math lab and you do those globes and you do those problems, don't those look exactly like your exam questions? So those globe problems look exactly like your exam questions. So as long as you're practicing those globes, you're gonna ace the exam. All right. So here's the first objective: add and subtract. complex numbers. And we know that complex numbers are numbers that have an I in them. So for example, you have five minus 11 I, which is a complex number, plus seven plus four I, which is another complex number. But guess what? We're gonna treat the imaginary unit I is equal to square root. 
So it's like, okay, so what does she say? All we're gonna do is add the five and the seven, and all we're gonna do is combine the I's. So a negative and a positive depends, so this would be negative seven I, so we're gonna write it in standard form. Pretty simple, right? Right? Results in standard form, which is A plus BI. Here, negative five plus I minus negative 11 minus six I. Now in first semester, remember me harping about the distributive property, the distributive property, the distributive property. So when you wanna rewrite this to negative five plus I plus 11 plus six I, Please give me a thumbs up. You know this, right? Bernie. Yeah. Do you get it? Bernie. Bernie. He's having a technical problem, I can tell right now. Adrian, Cecilia, everybody else, you guys get this? Yeah. 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 So now we're going to put it in standard form. So we have a negative five and a positive 11 is a positive six. And what is, what's six I plus I? Seven I? Yeah. Because there's a one in front, right? All right, that's it for adding and subtracting. You want me to do any more of these? You want me to do another subtraction? Are you guys okay? Uh, I'm good. I'm good. Okay. Let's go to multiplying. This is objective two. Multiplying complex numbers. So we're just gonna treat the I like a variable. So tell me what to write, guys. What's four I plus three times three? What's four I times three? 12 I. And what now? What's four I times negative five I? Wouldn't that be 20 I squared? Uh, yeah. So wouldn't that be negative 20 I squared? Well, didn't we say that I squared is equal to negative one? So on the next step, shouldn't we do this? Shouldn't we take the I squared out and put in negative one? Shouldn't we substitute a negative one in there? Yes. So you're never gonna live Always. Okay, now, how do you write this in standard form? The I does not go in front, right? How would you write this in standard form? Go 
Go ahead, I'm listening. Would it be 20 plus 12i? It's exactly what it would be. Now, listen. Listen, listen, listen. Can I divide both of these by four? Yeah. I can. So if I divide by four, I'm going to divide this blank by four. Is this, is, an, is this an equation or an expression? Isn't this an expression? So I can't divide by four. Watch. Can't you divide this by four? Divide by four, divide by four, divide by four, because it's an equation. Is this an equation? No. No. So do not divide. unless you want to get the wrong answer. So let's do another one. Doesn't this, we're multiplying by two complex numbers. Doesn't this look like the FOIL method? Doesn't this look like first, outer, inner, last? Yes? Yeah. So we're going to say 7 times negative 2 is negative 14. And the outer would be ne multiply negative 35i. The inner, when you multiply, would be a positive 6i. And the last would be a negative times a negative is a positive 15i squared. Okay, did everybody get that? Yes or no? Unmute yourself and say yes or no. Yes. Come on, I want to hear all of you. Yes or no? Yes. yes. Yeah. Yep. Yeah? Yep. Okay. Yes. Okay, good. I like that. All right, so negative 14, and then these guys go together, right? Because these are like terms. So a negative and a positive depends, and when you subtract, you get what? 29, is that right? Yeah. And then plus, uh-oh, what are we supposed to do when we see an I squared? Are we supposed to take it out and put in negative one? Yes. 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 All right. So this would be negative 14 minus 29I minus 15, because we're multiplying. Now up here, a negative times a negative was a positive. What's a negative and a negative when you're adding? It's still negative, right? Uh -huh. Or it depends? No, no, no. Negative and negative is a negative and negative. 29 minus 29i. Oh, okay. Now, everybody pay attention. Can I divide both by 29? No. No. Because this is not an equation. This is an expression. And you, you cannot simplify this any further. This is simplified. We could divide by 29 if it was an equation, but it's not. It's an expression. See, look. Do you see an equal up here? You don't see an equal up here, right? So we're simplifying an expression. We're not solving an equation. Okay, do you guys want me to do another one? Another one of these? Yes.
do a couple more. Okay, it's a pure imaginary times a complex, negative six i times that. So we're gonna distribute. So what do we get when we distribute? We get negative 30 i and a negative times a negative is a positive 12 i squared. So what do we have to do, you guys? Don't we have to change the i squared to? A negative one. So what's our final answer in standard form? Would it be negative 12 plus 30i? Negative 12 minus, right, 30i. Oh, minus, okay. No problem. I knew what you meant. negative two times a negative five. A positive 10? It's a positive. Guys. Uh, it's, it's 10. And then when you multiply the outer, what's a negative times a negative? A positive eight I. And what's a positive times a negative? What's seven times negative five? Negative 35. 35 I. I. And here we go. I'm gonna wait for a response. What's seven I times a negative four I? Negative three. Okay, the second square. Remember, remember, uh -huh. remember you're multiplying, Bernie. You're multiplying. This is all multiplying. Oh, okay, yeah. Negative 28i <laughs> squared. So now we combine these terms, which would be a negative and a And then you take the i squared out and you put a negative one in, correct? Now, do not try to do these problems in one step. You cannot do them in one step. They're, they're two or three step problems, four step problems. So this would be what? 10 minus 27i. What is a negative times a negative? Positive. Okay. And what would this answer be in standard form? Would it be 38 minus 27i? Right. All right, so I'm going to stop there today, and um, <clears throat> I'm hoping and praying that Google Classroom will come up sometime today, and I'll be able to things in there and everything else. But don't you worry about anything. Um, let me worry about all this, and hopefully <clears throat> they will uh, get things straightened out soon. So for now... Since you can't go into Google Classroom, I'm just going to show you what the assignment looks like because you can get started on it. All right. So we haven't done everything, but we're going to do on page 314. And this is going to be lesson 2.1.
we're going to, for now, just do the odds. And remember, the odds are in the back of the book. So we're going to do 1 through 49 odd. But like I said, you're not going to be able to do all of these because I haven't taught them. But you should be able to do 1 through 19. So you should be able to do like 9 or 10 problems. So I want 9 or 10 problems done before the next, before Thursday. And if you have any questions, bring your questions with you. Okay, now just a reminder, make sure you get your notebook together and make sure when you do the assignment, make sure you write the original problem in pencil, make sure you work vertically. Okay? All right, I hope you guys have a wonderful day. It was so great to see you and be back with you. Um, like I said, I'm, I'm here if you need to talk. Thank you. All right, bye you guys, have a good day. Bye guys, have a good day. Bye, have a good day. Bye, bye Ms. Birch. Bye guys, thank you. Bye guys, have a good day. Bye Ms. Birch, have a nice day. Bye guys, thank you. Thank you, you too. Bye, Riley.